I've been using Blender since 1997, so over 10 years. Pretty much when when was starting to use it, I was I started using Blender when I was in when I was in school, and the the problem was that I had to fight to get time in the lab and 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 do all that sort of thing, and we were using Softimage at the time, and great program, great software, but I couldn't use it at home, and it wouldn't run on the hardware that I had at home, and I couldn't afford a license for it when I was still in school, so went online and started looking around for software that I could get for a good price and. Ideally, it could run on on an open source operating system like Linux, and stumbled across Blender, which was really, really much in its nascent stages. But the stuff that could be produced even at that point in time it was really it was it was commercial. So it was software used for commercial production. Just seeing the things that were that it was capable of there, and then once it became free software, once it became open source, you know that opened up a whole nother window of things because now not only do I get the software for free and I can use it for making whatever sort of productions that I want, I have the capability to have the source code. And if I want to make a change to the software, if I want to add a feature to it, I can do it myself or I can hire a programmer to do it for me, which is huge. Oh, there's so many. Oh, there's so many good little features coming out. Uh, the, on a, on a, on a on an advanced level, the meta rig stuff that, that they're adding in, that they added in during the, the, the open movie project, Sintel, um, the Durian project, uh, allows much, much faster rigging. It's still kind of nascent because they're using it in production. They're cleaning it up as it reaches its final release of 2.6, but that's a really nice thing. Something that came out for the end of the 2.4 series, which I still love, is the Echaton. It's the sketch-based rigging, where you basically draw a line on the screen and then it can generate the bones within the mesh and you don't have to worry really much about how it's oriented or anything like that. It all takes care of that for you. I'm excited to see B-Mesh come in, which is a, a new mesh uh, infrastructure which allows for a bunch of really new th uh, things that a lot of other modeling programs have had for years but Blender, is, well, Blender users have been working without it for a while and um, stuff, stuff like ingons and more advanced ways to do beveling and those sorts of things are really really good for, for that and um, the animation system would be the other really big one because they, that got overhauled and you can do uh, modifiers on the animation curves and really do a lot of really cool noise things to give more interest to those animations. Dig in. You learn the tool by using it. And Blender has traditionally been software that is fast for using, but not necessarily fast for learning. The 2.5, 2.6 revisions to the interface have really helped mitigate that quite a bit. It's a lot easier for new people to get involved with it, but it still tastes like Blender. You know, there's still things you have to learn, still get involved with it, and a lot of that involves just getting your hands dirty and working on it. There's a lot of great documentation online for it that can help get you started with it, good online tutorials, and uh, my book's not bad. <laughs>